Hi, this is Matt, and today we're talking about what's in the Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi chapter 1. The phrase I've chosen to represent this chapter is land of liberty unless or until they reject the Son of God. And we'll talk just a little bit more about that. In this chapter, Lehi is talking to his sons, Laman and Lemuel, trying to encourage them to come unto Christ, to repent, to give up their sinfulness. Um, they've never been very receptive to that, but he's trying with all of his might to get them to, to change their hearts. And I want to emphasize a couple of points that Lehi brings up. The first one, I call it the promise of the Book of Mormon, and I do that because it repeats several times throughout the Book of Mormon, and it always proves to be true. Verse 20 says, Inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. But inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from my presence. God is essentially saying, if you obey me, I will bless you and prosper you and provide for you, and there will be no end to your prosperity. But if you reject me and refuse to obey my commandments, you're at the mercy of the world, and it will not end pretty. And ultimately, we know that the Nephites and even the Jaredites before them were destroyed as they rejected the Son of God. The, uh, the next point that I want to bring up, I refer to it as, as land of liberty, uh, just that this land of America is not just a land of liberty now, but it's promised to be a land of liberty by God himself, and it has been a land of liberty before now. So the Constitution being established on the American continent was not novel. It wasn't the first time this has been a land of liberty because that theme runs all throughout the Book of Mormon. Verse, uh, Starting in verse 6 of Second Nephi chapter 1, says, Wherefore I, Lehi, prophesy according to the workings of the Spirit, which is in me, that there shall none come into this land, save they shall be brought by the hand of the Lord. Wherefore, this land is consecrated unto him whom he shall bring. And if it so be that they shall serve him according to the commandments which he hath given, it shall be a land of liberty unto them. Wherefore, they shall never be brought down into captivity. If so, it shall be because of iniquity. For if iniquity shall abound, cursed be the land for their sakes. But unto the righteous it shall be blessed forever. And then in verse 10 and 11. Behold, I say, if the day shall come that they will reject the Holy One of Israel, the true Messiah, their Redeemer, and their God, behold, the judgments of him that is just shall rest upon them. Yea, he will bring other nations unto them, and he will give unto them power, and he will take away from them the lands of their possessions, and he will cause them to be scattered and smitten. So again, this land of liberty was a land of liberty anciently it's a land of liberty now if we will obey Jesus Christ the Son of God um, those nations who were here before us were destroyed and annihilated the question is what will we do now my fellow Americans will we follow Jesus Christ or will we reject God and ultimately be destroyed it might not happen tomorrow it might not it might happen with our children our grandchildren we don't know we don't really want to play it out in that direction. We've had two examples before us. But I invite you to increase your devotion to Christ and to exercise greater faith in Him by either doing something that you know Christ wants you to do or giving up something that you know He wants you to give up. Both of those are acts of faith and will increase your righteousness. And until next time, happy reading.